One second, lost guys. Everything? Should we keep talking just in case? <laughs> 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 I mean, is this even being recorded? Will yeah, this be on the video audio? later? I just got a new one from YouTube saying watch live now. Oh, try that one. Uh oh, you missed the alert. And now you'll never find it. Oh, wait, it's right there. Don't be a weirdo. <laughs> Too late. It says back online on this one. Maybe we're. I mean, I see myself looking down at my com at my thing. <laughs> Maybe we're. Hi in guys, limbo. sorry. Hello? I have no idea what happened. Hopefully, we're up. I think we're good. I mean, I see us on YouTube, so. People are missing the most important part where we were asking. Where we talk about ice cube trays. God. Well, and, and bushy imagery sent to his email. Right. Nope. Hopefully. Close there was a major crash on the internet highway today. I know. I am so sorry. It was terrible. Oh. We got caught up in it. Alan says we're good. All right, guys. Had, I mean, we had internet connectivity earlier today where just kind of our everything just kind of cut out. I'm just going to chop our internet con connectivity. Hey, look, I'm so upset. Ellen. Yay. Hello, Ellen. Back, di back with Jimmy. This time, Jimmy, don't mess up our stream, okay? God. Ben says right? it's good. <laughs> if Ben says it's good, it's good, okay? Charity All right. Board gamers here. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. We're going to get started on our Kickstarters. <laughs> you missed all our Ice Cube talk, and I feel sorry for you, okay? Alan wants me to say, baby shark, do, 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 baby shark. Okay. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> Anything for Alan. All right. First up, we have Honey Buzz by Elk Creek Games. This is for one to four players. It's going to last about 45 to 90 minutes. This game has a ton of stuff happening in it. Not only are you trying to make little honeycombs and collect honey, but you're also looking at the board and trying to find flowers with the right nectar on them. And then there's also market bidding in this game, which is really exciting and interesting. So, Greg, what were your first impressions on this game? Well, I liked that it was like a combination of worker placement, but also... Oh, also tile placement, but also like a deduction element. I mean, there's like variant ways to play, but there is an element of like trying to figure out what the odds are that the upside down tiles are what you do or do not need and trying to kind of like deduce. I thought that was kind of an interesting blend of mechanics. Now, I tend to not be a huge fan of deduction games, but I think it, as an element in a, you know, sort of otherwise Euro, light Euro kind of game, it could be something that, that might be kind of an interesting twist, so... All right, Dr. Glory yeah, Hog, what are you thinking? Oh, uh, you know, usually I don't go super in on like bug games or super cute games just because of the fact. But when I looked at it and like you said, there's the bidding. Yeah. It's got where you've got worker placement, you've got different things where you've got contracts you're trying to fulfill while you're also trying to do stuff on the bidding table with your excess honey. Yeah. You've got um, your tile placement. You've got the tiles that are face down and you gotta kinda like you've gotta try to look at them and there could be slight variations where you might have a different flower in that group of flowers that should be a different type of flower. And if I see you look at it and you don't take it, I'm right. like, well, if he didn't take yeah. it, he doesn't have room for ch like That's cherry the blossom. Yeah. So then I'm like, it must be a cherry blossom because he didn't take it. And you can mess with people that way too, actually. So there's like so much going on here. It's like a whole bunch of different things that I like all kind of shoved into one. So I'm actually really, really excited about it. Yeah, this one, guys, I have to say was at the top of my list. I was so excited to... Like, it felt like the more I looked at this game, the more I was like, oh, I love this. Oh, I love what they're doing with this. Oh, look at this, what they're doing. You know, <laughs> it was, you know, not just arranging the honeycomb there, but you have to make sure all the walls are correct in order to get the right nectar from the field. And then even just the nectar from the field. I'm like the worst at memory style games like this, but it's exciting in the fact that if somebody picks that up, I don't know whether they want that or not. Kind of what Dr. Glory Hog was saying and that just like added the extra level and then like once i got to the marketing portion i was like all right guys i love I mean, marketing I, may, I may i know i may as well just throw my <laughs> money do. at this yeah i also like the and this is just kind of a word on the campaign more than the game that they had like different testimonials than the like same three or four people you always see nothing against those same three or four people but like to have like jimmy stagmeyer's quote as to what he thought of it and like a big joel eddy which i don't see as often it was just kind of I don't know, just interesting and refreshing to kind of see some other voices besides the same I three or four you always see. You I know? think the big thing is I just couldn't find anything about it that I didn't like. like usually, you know, you find like, oh, that looks all right, or oh, Squishy I don't know if that's going to be good. Too. I know, yeah, right? right? I saw that too. Yeah, it's like Everdell. And so this is one of the few times I say we go, deluxe. <laughs> Tiny little bee meeples and stuff like I that. I like the new symbol for deluxe. Like deluxe. That? I like deluxe. that. We need to do it all at the same time. <laughs> One, two, three. Deluxe. <laughs> <laughs> I, someone make a GIF out of that. 
or a gift, or a gift, or a gift. Please don't ever oh, put me on the internet. I should not be there. You're, gonna you're start already up, there, buddy. You're going to start up a war on the comments there. I tend to agree. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Is I tend to agree with Daniel. Um, spoiler alert. That this one and Tungaru, or however you pronounce it, mm -hmm. are like the main contenders as so well. So would you consider Bingo a rolling right? <coughs> Someone posted on Twitter the other day, would you consider bowling a rolling right? <laughs> I tried to keep it like I was like I tried to take it seriously for about a minute and then I was like and then nah, it was just done it was just, it's gone. just Greg <coughs> yeah this is actually one of the few games that as I was looking at I'm like yeah I'd go deluxe on this one because you get instead of just having little cardboard tiles and now all of a sudden they're acrylic so they're like little fat like chunky ones and it already looks really cute so I think it's just going to add to the overall gameplay and I think I've thought of more of that because of playing stuff like Raccoon Tycoon and some of these other games that were like they're great cardboard but like you had that extra little thing to it and you're like okay yeah. these are really nice yeah so what about the add-ons then like be getting the little wooden components for the not score trackers but like money technically that it's you're tempting. doing the game yeah yeah like are we all in like not just I deluxe but extra refuse i refuse on you that. refuse no okay. so i don't want that be only because <coughs> we, we got in that big double set of roxley like poker chips coming like, I mean, big, huge, double, like, in a wood box set. So I'm using that. I'm using those constantly. Plus, we also have the Stegmeyer, you know, the Stonemeyer um, coins from side that I really like that are all, like, kind of like different shapes and kind of like they're from different parts of the company that or country that we use all the time for different games and stuff like that. So I think between those, we have enough, like, other, like, upgrades that we've bought for other games or just in general that I'm not super excited about those particular things. But if you want to get super thematic and keep on theme, then I could see going for it. I just don't want to spend that extra 20 bucks. So extra 20 bucks. So, so Alan, yeah, Alan was looking for clarification on that. So that extra 20 bucks is on top of the 59? Is that what I you're saying? I thought I so. I can't remember now. Or is that... I s or is th are they saying that that's what you... So, for the deluxe... Remind me, because I looked at it, yeah. but I can't remember how it all For the deluxe box out. right here, it's saying that you're going to get the sleeve with the board art and everything mm -hmm. in it. You're going to get and the upgraded, the like, uh, upgraded tokens, and yeah, yeah, and then the upgraded fans and stuff like that. But I didn't the see stick. the coins in there as an upgrade. So that's an extra 20 for just the coins? I thought so. For the wooden ones, okay. right? I'm or not sure. Th that's, why I, that's why I, I, thought they were I couldn't extra. recall how it all shook out. The the money on it. Right. The nectar tiles, the though, levels. being like a thicker sort of component and stuff like that yeah. is the big thing on the deluxe thing. Because sometimes whenever you get in on a game board and then you have like little, well, little cardboard pieces on a board, sometimes they're hard to pick up and stuff. So adding that volume to everything for me, like I just Nails. enjoy. Yeah, exactly. I just enjoy. <laughs> Which is something that I think about now. So Zayas was saying something about those clay chips and how there was that argument where you were like, eh, and I was super excited about them. Well, I had like a gift card. So I was like, yeah, I'll buy the cheapest set you can get. And then for Father's Day, she actually bumped it up to the next level. They had the nice wood box That's and love everything right there. and stuff. Yeah, it was really cool. And hello to Silver Liam so who I'll be joined excited us to get those. in the chat as well. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us today. So, okay, from everything that we know, Greg, would you back this? I think so. I'm going to run this one by the missus. If Ooh, she's in, I'm really? in. Really? Yeah, it looks really solid. I like that it's Plus, a... Plus, it's in your price range of $39. <laughs> your under true. $40 game. Well, you know, that helps. They should just call it the Greg level. Forty nine. Uh, so the Greg, the Greg level. level is $40, <laughs> or it's the back for a dollar, and I'll wait till I try it before I buy it level. It's the I still want to pay my mortgage level. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't right. have such a big house. Dr. Gloryhog, will you be backing this game? Yeah, no, I think so. Um, yeah, it'll depend on what level, of course, but I kind of feel like Deluxe is, is definitely, and I've been really leaning away from Deluxe recently. I've been like, yeah, I don't really need Deluxe. I'm trying to be real, like, particular about when I'm going to go for Deluxe because <coughs> that 20 bucks starts to add up where you're like, I could have got a whole other game if since I deluxe like, three or four different games. But I think this one is worth it. I, I'm excited about this one. I want to do it in Deluxe. And Daniel Zayas gives his seal of approval. Art, 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 art. Oh, he, he played it at it. Essen, yeah, and he said it is a solid game. I'm down for this. I'm back in this. This was my top choice for the week. Spoilers. I'm so excited about yeah. this. So it's all downhill from here? Might I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say <laughs> it's all just downhill. Turn off the stream. <laughs> I'm just saying that you it never just stop so midstream. <laughs> yeah, it just so <laughs> happens that this particular yeah, one that way. was my favorite for the week. I'm 100% down with that deluxe copy. I'm so excited. And it's about adorable little bees and i like a game like this that's like cute and it looks kind of like light and silly but there's actually seems to be like some hidden depth here that you wouldn't expect just by the you know the presentation plus i just think that there's enough different mechanisms going on here <laughs> that like everybody <laughs> can find <laughs> stuff that they like yeah yeah 
All right, next up. We have Tungaru. This is by Alley Cat Games. It's for two to five players. It's going to last about 60 to 90 minutes. And this is a worker placement game where you are rolling dice to sort of get resources. And then you're going to be placing those dice on the board in order to have actions happen for your island. You're going to be collecting nomad cards. And then you're going to be passing any cards that you use as far as like nomads and stuff. Over to the next person is the way I understood it on this one. But yeah. what were your first impressions on this, Greg? Well, you guys know how I feel about, like, pedigree. I thought uh -huh. this was your pick. <laughs> so when I, we did, I, I do think this I is my pick. I figured that you would back this yeah. one, and I would get to play it because of that. <laughs> I, was I like, do this think is this Greg's. is the one I'd be most likely to back and most excited about this week. And the first, my first impression was like, oh, this is like the Blue Lagoon theme. <laughs> it, kind of, right? But you also liked Marco Polo. And Marco Polo was that kind of yeah. Dice I liked placement. Marco Polo, yeah. although I haven't played it a ton, but I liked we it, the, it the times I have played it. But this also has that pedigree, right? It has the artists from like Tapestry, Tapestry, yep. and the is it, is it Rico a really good game and Everdell. I don't know if you ever heard well, of it. Well, the art in Everdell is amazing. We're <laughs> <laughs> <And laughs> well, lovers of Everdell right here. And uh, so and the designer is this one that's designed by Rico the Rococo yeah, designers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So which I also enjoyed. So I mean, it just feels like decent price point, cool, f you know, interesting, different, somewhat different theme. And like that pedigree, and so yeah, it's tempting. I mean, it's really. It looks. I mean, there's. What's not to like? <laughs> I don't know. This <laughs> reminds me, like, just the board and the art and everything of like Moana, the board game. Yeah. Well, that's what I said. It reminds me of Blue Lagoon, which we also called like Moana, the board game. It's the same idea. Well, of we these, played the like soundtrack Polynesian while tribes we were playing it. Settling, yeah, 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 on these on these islands. Doctor Glory Hog, what do you think about this game? So I think it looks very interesting. I've only really played one dice placement game in. Recently, and so I say recently, like in the last probably like four years, that I can really think of where I was. Oh, I guess we played Glucks, but that, that's kind of a, more of an abstract yeah, game. Yeah, that's not. But it was Marco Polo, and I enjoyed Marco Polo. It just wasn't one that I saw like being the one that I got excited about to bring out all the time. And you know, for me, excitement's a big factor. Where I'm like, right. if I'm excited about a game, I'm going to play it a lot, and, and I'm going to try to introduce it to a bunch of people. And that's typically how I get most of my plays in on my favorite games is by you know introducing to people, kind of like what you do. Um, so I just I'm not 100% sold on this one. I do really like the theme. I think it's probably going to be a, a pretty good game. I just don't have the same excitement level like I do for like the B game. Like the B game, I'm like super excited about and yeah. showing it to people. Where this one, I think will be good and it'll be a good solid game. I just think it'll end up in that kind of middle middle category where I'm like, it's a good game, but it'll never be like my favorite game. Yeah. What about those deluxe looking at components? I'll scroll back up. These deluxe components on this game with the, the little like boats. boats and everything. Yeah. I was like, oh my god. I can float all my people over in a real boat. Like, well, that's the best thing. Like, War of the Worlds. I was down there and making noises with all my aliens <laughs> and stuff. She was. Like, she was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All night. It was ridiculous. Like, Three in the morning. Pew, pew, pew. If I'm in a boat, we're going to get some wave sounds going on. We're going to, like, whoosh. That's why you over. buy. <laughs> See, the only reason why a gamer buys an Alexa is to play the Moana soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> while you're playing games like this in Blue Lagoon, you have to you have to play the Moana soundtrack whenever it's you're playing this. Well, it's because it's, it's the most it's well required, right? It's a pretty <laughs> well known. It's a good soundtrack, but it's also kind of like a well known Polynesian theme. So, <gasps> and uh, Alan's saying back at Deluxe or wait for retail. Looks good, but I will wait wait for retail. You know, and Alley Cat Games has been putting out a lot of really good stuff. They have, yeah. Like yeah. Dice Hospital been was real solid. Yeah, and this has a, a promo for Dice Hospital in it. If you uh, go Deluxe, I believe. It's yeah. one of the Kickstarter things. We've been following Alley Cat Games, and I feel like we've covered a lot of There's their stuff. There's at least one other one I can't think of right now, but but Dice Hospital. Did I they do really one of the like cat? Well, well, they did the Chocolate one. Factory. They did Dino World. Oh, welcome right? to Dino World. Welcome which to you guys Dino backed, World. Right? Yeah, oh yeah. Like I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, there's been a ton of them that we've covered oh, because they just keep promo. on putting out really good stuff. There's another big one that I'm thinking of that they did, but I can't think of what it is right now. But I know they're also trying to get more into mass market too, so. They're definitely spreading their wings and trying out some different uh, categories of games, which is good. Yeah, I'm super down with this game. It looks fantastic. I, I like the worker placement portion of it with rolling the dice, and then those are going to be your resources, and then you're going to go ahead and distribute those across the board and stuff. I've always loved that mechanic because yeah. it really makes you – choose and for me who's a strategic gamer who loves planning everything i need that planning aspect and then the dice puts that tiny bit of chance in it where i have to like maneuver things just a little bit but it doesn't necessarily ruin my plans in just a game. enough tactical that right. it keeps you kind of engaged right because you can't have games like this that are too strategic which sounds like what what's that mean but we're like 
your seven turns out in your mind and you're just kind of waiting for it to come back around to you. I Whereas when like there's like that. a rolling element that kind of does help you keep you engaged and go, oh crap, now I got to try something different. Now I got to mix it up a little. <laughs> you know, whether it's like Castles of Burgundy or Coimbra, like this mechanic often works really well. So if you actually go to our Patreon site, you can buy a copy of this with water from my bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> you and wanted water, real water with it. So you can get some... <laughs> Gamer guy water. <laughs> That's going to be the next big thing. Gamer guy some hard water. Gamer guy water. Yeah, some hard brown Arizona water. Just, yeah. <laughs> it is mineral rich. You could probably it sift limestone fresh, out of it. Fresh it's from the borderline tap. Borderline opaque. <laughs> uh, I already backed this cat butt. So. And yeah. Ellen says, I thought you all backed Chocolate Factory. I wanted to, but there was something else that week we ended up okay. backing. But I will be getting a copy of Chocolate Factory. I'm going to be 100% honest I've only heard good things. I don't remember what we backed anymore. <laughs> So a lot of stuff shows up as a surprise. What was the newest one we just got? And we just got some this week. Let's have the fun, right? Daniel Zayas, you can actually back the cat butt here on our Patreon. Yeah. Or on our uh, Ko-Fi, yeah, not Patreon, Ko-Fi. Yeah, you go to so Ko-Fi. So, yeah, absolutely. Go to Ko-Fi. That money helps pay for cat food. That's right. But absolutely. if I had a Patreon, I would be selling <laughs> Gamer Guy water <laughs> and just see if I could blow up. Nobody's going to buy your Gamer Guy water. It's just going to be Mountain Nobody Dew. wants that in their life, <laughs> okay? Dew. It's going to be Mountain Dew that I dipped my foot into. By the way, did double play of Architects and Paladins of the West Kingdom last night. We had a discussion about strengths and weaknesses. Interesting tactical strategy. We'll you should we throw should that up on the page because I'd be interested yeah. to see your thoughts on both. Because she's played um, Paladins. I have, you play Paladins I've also, played right? Both, yeah. yeah. So they both played Paladins with uh, Game Boy Geek, but I didn't get a chance to play that one. So I would be interested to know what you thought strengths and, and weaknesses wise for both of them, Alan. Because I really liked Architects. I thought it was a cool idea. All right. So, Greg, this is... This, this is my favorite of the week. Is it? And the starting pledge is $38. So, again... Yeah. Did I call it? Right. Yeah, no, you were right. You're right. I was like, this one is great. It's got pedigree. It's right. It's affordable. And it feels like it has depth of play and yes. table presence. I mean... So that means we're going to get to play it as long as his <laughs> wife says yes. <laughs> exactly. Are you going to go deluxe? Hold on. Are you going to go... Deluxe. Whoa, we got it. We got it down. Uh, I'll have to look at that more closely. I don't know for sure. And, and like someone else said, I could see I could see waiting for retail unless you go deluxe. I mean, that's a decision that right, everyone's going to have to make individually. Because I believe this one does have, and I might be wrong, so you guys can definitely double check me. I think it is you get the Kickstarter stuff with the deluxe one, but not with without it, I which do, a lot yeah. of them do now. I do kind of regret not buying container with those big boats, so maybe yeah. I'm going to have to get the big boats here. You know, I don't know. Listen, okay. everybody likes big boats. I cannot can't lie. lie. Right. Yeah, can't lie <laughs> <about> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> How many burritos is this game? Something this like game four? is at least four burritos. That's yeah. not bad. That's one family out night. Okay? Seriously. If How you much are your burritos costing? The ratio is about $7. <laughs> 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 what do you guys got going no, on? No, no, those are for the non-meat burritos regular burritos yeah. cost about 10 or 11 dollars i want the guac i want the yeah meat. oh How that's at least it's like 17 dollars for that burrito <laughs> yeah why not <laughs> how much do those burritos cost i really don't know <laughs> i don't know so i two would actually been in chipotle forever two of we gr greg's, time, but two yeah, of greg's burritos four of our burritos that's right yeah, yeah. so yeah. conversion rates guys okay so one <laughs> night out i one always consider out. a burrito about seven to eight dollars somewhere in that kind of middle-ish range well, now you're making me do math come on it's friday my brain All is right. not working. I am 100% down for a Tunguru. It looks fantastic. I would go for the deluxe components because, guys, there's little mini boats. It's and less stuff. than six like, burritos, really. guys. Yeah, this between the two of them, I mean, you could spend like around 80 bucks and get two fantastic games. Like, I'm super, I'm super down. Backed. Psh, I need like a little gavel and stuff. Like that would be <laughs> awesome. Get the little hammer from Tiny Towns. <laughs> <laughs> we do have that little tiny, little tiny hammer. And I did that all the time too. I'd go, "Hey guys," and they'd be like, "What?" And I'm like, "It's hammer time." And they get so mad. We always say, hear ye, hear ye every People time we play so Tiny Towns. Oh, sorry. We weren't going to talk about burritos in front of oh, Alan. No. Oh, we made him hungrier. Uh-oh. <laughs> Me too, bud. Just imagine Me that too. burrito. All right. I always into eat that after succulent this. Meat. Oh, wait. Sorry. It's like the size <laughs> of a small child as you hold it in your hand. <laughs> a little baby. You oh, cradle it next to you. My oldest daughter when she was born. It's all delicious. All right, next up we have Titans by Go On Board. This is for one to four players. It's going to last about 80 to 160 minutes. This is a bigger box campaign game. I don't want to say like it's a big, big box campaign game because I don't think it has as many campaigns in it as some of the other ones that we've looked it at. It feels more like a skirmish. It's more like game. an air right. control. More of a skirmish. More like a blood rage than a campaign. Exactly, exactly. But. The really cool thing about this is the choice of movement cards. Choice of movement cards are on the table. 
and everybody has access to them. And then when you make your move, you use that card and expend it. And then other players have to use cards from that same table that you are getting cards off of. And for me, that was a really unique piece. Greg, what were your first impressions of this game? I've been like... Some of my favorite all-time games are miniature war, you know, these types of games. And some of them I've been burned with, you know. Like, I, um, after loving Tyrants of the Underdark so much, I got Assault of the Giants, which was another, like, D&D, like, you know. You picked that one up on a deep discount, though, didn't you? Uh, I don't remember, actually. I, I, it was it was. It was on sale. But that it was one still, deep discount I want to say it was quick. 55 bucks or something. Okay. I mean, it was still a decent amount. Because it's, you know, the giant minis and stuff. And it was fine, but it just was like, oh, I wanted more from this. Right, you never you know? went back to really play it again. I never really did. And so with these kinds of games, these are, like, I feel like they lend themselves more to that try before you buy kind of thing. Because they always look cool with the big minis and all that. And I always want a cool game where, where you know, armies are fighting on the board and fighting for control. But they can be kind of hit and miss. And especially at this price point, I mean, it looks solid. It feels like they... It's a real passion project, something they put a lot of time and effort and energy and thought into. So I assume it's going to be good, but anytime you get to that $100, I get real hesitant. I mean, I, I think everybody does. You know, it's a lot of cash. Dr. Glory Hog, what do you think? So for me, I, I kind of, yeah, it immediately fell into like that, oh, it's a $100 miniature game. We look at these every single week. If we don't look at one, we look at two or three. And yeah. I look at even more because I weed a bunch of them out too. So it's almost like constantly looking at this game. Um, and I was ready to kind of give like that quick glance over and be like, oh, yeah, I don't really know why you picked this one. I'm not super excited by this one or whatever. But as I kind of further down into it, and you mentioned the movement. I think the movement is really big where it's not like a secret movement or anything else. You're basically drafting a movement card out from the middle. It shows exactly what people are going to do. Everybody knows what options are available that round. And uh, you can really kind of like have like that interplay where you're like, you know, you draft something you think that other player's going right, to need so right. they can't move their titan into your realm or you can build a, put down a fortress before their turn to go ahead and do do something with that or you know they're going to really want that fortress or whatnot. And then you got some of the asymmetrical powers where you've got your own little deck that you get to get based off your nation deck and, and it kind of builds out your army and stuff right. differently. And I like that it wasn't just like this giant titan versus just, just giant titan. It's like different unit types right. plus a big guy. And so you get yeah. to really play differently which is one of the things I always liked about uh, D&D Attack Wing is that you could play with a giant dragon or you could play with a bunch of little guys. And if you're playing with, like, five paladins, you could destroy a dragon if it's stupid enough to get close to the ground. Or, you know, you could be a dragon and just fireball everybody to death. So there's really different strategies to play depending on what you're playing. And that's kind of what I thought about this one. So it looks more interesting than I thought it would have been. What did you guys think of Alan's comment here? Yeah. The theming is confusing. I, I do kind of understand where he's coming from with that because they kept referring to it as, like, these – historical skirmishes or whatever. I'm like, these aren't historical skirmishes. Like, well, it was the like idea a weird is it's like the spirit of that place, right? Yeah. So they try right. to get like what you would think of when you think of that yeah. region. You know, like, oh, this is what their people are known for or whatnot. So. I wonder why they hesitated from just going s all in with fantasy and still kind of or packaged it that way. As all historical. in for historical. Yeah, I or, think or yeah. what happened here is you see people that are trying to – have get that yeah get that <laughs> historical war game yeah. sort of thing and yeah. then bring it into a regular board game market and make it easy to use for people yet still really strategic get the Academy and exciting games crowd and the D&D crowd yeah and super exciting <laughs> you know? exactly and this seems like a merging of that cuz you have some really interesting mechanics here and then area control and stuff which is one of my favorite things to do with area control I love games area control games too but did it come off in the right way? I don't know. I don't know because I was a little confused about the theming as well because I was like, okay, historical. And then I was like, wait a second. What are all these big people? Like this looks like <laughs> Lords of Hella or something. Like what is yeah, what is yeah. going on here? That's <laughs> funny that Zayas knows my high school nickname, Burrito Titan. <laughs> That's what they called me. Now, we weren't sure how to pronounce Tunguru. Are we sure we know how to pronounce Tunguru. this? Is this Titan? Titan? T no, no. Titan? No. <laughs> <laughs> Tachachakawakakan? <laughs> yeah, Geoffrey says, trying to get the best of both worlds. But Do I don't mean, think there's anything wrong with like that. This feels like a nitpick, though. I mean, honestly, I, I, I think this game could be amazing. I just want to try it, you know? Well, and Daniel said that it's very easy and approachable yeah, and, and they, stuff. Yeah, they and they do sell it that way in the yeah. video, too. They make Which it sound good, like it's, you can dive right in. I've got some big games that, like, they've got rule books that are like, I'm just never going to get to this. But then you got some ones that are, yeah. like, that kind of in the middle where there's a lot of play with what's happening on the board. But the rule set's easy enough that you can start getting playing right away. And I feel like... Yeah, like heavy hitters is kind of like that, where you can start playing it right away. You don't need this. And sometimes the basics are simple, but there's a lot of little fiddly things. Like I remember yeah. playing the like 
a T M N T game, and it was like, oh, this seems simple enough, but it's like, oh, but if you move on that train, then there's a, a minus you got to remember, and if you go here, don't forget that little extra you have to roll, and it just seemed like, uh, now I'm bogged Bowser down. Well, now I'm bogged okay. down in all these little rules, and I just can't just get to the fun. So. so I have to say, if this game did not have the mechanics where everybody was selecting. From, the, from same. the same board, I would have been like, eh, okay, I'm not as excited about this game. But because of those mechanics alone, I would back this game. Really? You know, yeah. Like, $100 price point with all the other games that I have Oof. on our board is hard to do at this point. Three for three so far. But... I feel like those mechanics are super sound, and I like I like area control games, you know? I do, too. But I do think they can miss sometimes. They can I've miss sometimes. I've been disappointed in the past, so I'm a little, like, gun-shy. Yeah. All and right. Th and there's nothing wrong with trying to play it. It seems like they're available to play it. They're making the rounds. Great. Oh, yeah, they said they were at Essen, and I, I was hoping someone had oh played yeah, it, well which Daniel, Daniel did. Daniel yeah. did, so. Greg, would you back this I game? I think I'm a pass for now until I have a chance to try it at that price point. Dr. Glory Hog, do you want to get beaten in an area control game by me? No. Oh. Does it play two, <laughs> by the way? That, that reminds me. I meant it goes to check. one to four, I think. Yeah, because there's like a solo variant. Yeah. Like yeah. A, a camp, the, it has more of a campaign with campaigns. the solo. Yeah. 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 So I've come to the realization that I always really love the idea of area control games, but I get super angry every time I play them. Yeah. You like Tyrants of the Underdark? Yeah, yeah, but when we played a three-player, <laughs> I got super mad at her. So, like, I do tend to kind of, like, lean away from them because, like, I really enjoy Blood Rage, but we don't play it often because I tend to get super mad. She's really good at them, and then I get super frustrated because, you know, I have, like, a military background. I get really mad that it, <laughs> it doesn't seem to, like, correlate in a game, which yeah. is fair. They're completely That's different true. worlds, but, you know, it is it is what it is. So... Although uh, I think it looks really exciting, I wouldn't be, like, upset if they showed up on our door. But, I mean, I personally wouldn't, like, you know, hit that back button. I'd kind of be on a, a try Sounds before like you Sounds like you're asking it. viewers to buy it for you. <laughs> no, it's more like I'm giving myself an out so that if she did buy it, like, you know, I wouldn't have to be like, oh, why did you do that, honey? Oh, that's funny. And I love how our commenters are – Zayas is like, we need a Titanic game. And then Battle Cry's like, check out the 1976 <laughs> Titanic game. I'm like, oh, this is very informational, chat. <laughs> like I, I think I know the one he's talking about. It actually shows the, bo like the boat half sinking on the board. Wow. And you're like trying to get the people out. If I remember right, I haven't seen and it And supposedly the minis are so good that uh, Zayas is saying Long Pack Games uses them in their sample when they show like, hey, these are the things we can do. As far as area control games go, this one I'm more excited about than some of the other ones that we've recently seen come out just because the other ones are so modular where you're like you play a faction and you have your cards and then like that's everything you can do this one seems so much more strategic to me and it seems more straightforward as an air control game yeah too, and less of a campaign yeah i was gonna say this is more of a, a skirmish game or dudes on a map game yeah. versus some of these other ones which are just dungeon delves which are just something that we've been inundated with which they're great and if you don't have one you can pick up them yeah. but it's like man it's like tossing a coin as far as which one's good because they're all great right. they're all going to be good you're not going to be dissatisfied with them but you can't spend 150 150 150 150 150 every single week on right. one or so 225 i'm going to say if we have the money i would back this <laughs> That's <laughs> like a big <laughs> There's a lot he's of like, really good he's games like this up week, his guys. Banking app as she talks. I, know, I do guys, not pull up the banking <laughs> app. If this was the only game, if we didn't have those other two, like I would be backing this for sure. I'm super excited some about it. Hard choices. I know hard choices. This sometimes week, after guys. the show, we kind of get together. And we're like, okay, you're gonna back that one. We'll <laughs> back yeah, this we have to one. break <laughs> it up, okay? Because otherwise, we're in a situation where we're like we both have War of the World, but War of the Worlds, to be fair, wasn't very expensive, oh. and we both really yeah. enjoyed it. But there have been times where we've we like we had well, a friend group. Worlds is like a two player too, so we're not like we can all get together yeah. as a group and play. But we had it. a friend group that we had like five out of six people backed Rising Sun, and it just got ridiculous. Where it was like, all right, so we all have it. I played my copy once. You played, I played your my copy, copy I once. Think once, maybe. But twice. I played the game like seven times. Yeah, so yeah. Next you up, know. we have Legacies by Brooks Fun Games. This is for one to six players. It's going to last about 90 to 180 minutes on this one. This one seems more like a civilization building game where you're going to go through three different eras and you're going to have a bunch of stuff happen. You're going to be looking for legacies to help carry you through those different eras while also like doing some sort of marketing and maintaining your company and growing your company as it goes along. Greg, what were your first impressions of this game? My first impressions was Rado is on like every campaign with like a little, hey, this is great. But in this one, it's like paragraphs of him gushing about how much he loves it. I was like, ah, so now I see the difference between one he really likes and one he's willing <laughs> to say nice <laughs> things about. You know what I mean? So that 
instantly I was intrigued because I mean, as much as people kind of give Rado crap for seeming to like like everything, he has steered me well in the past with some of the things he's recommended and really gushed about. So I was like, okay, I'm kind of in on this one, and I do love a good crunchy heavy euro, and I like that the third era is the future. I thought that was kind of a cool twist in, in like the civilization building thing. But I also worry he references Lacerda, and I worry that it's like too crunchy and maybe too bloated, you know. So I'm a little on the fence, but I I love the idea of it, uh, and I want it to be amazing. But I worry that it would be one of those uber crunchy euros that we just never get through, you know, never get to the table as often as we should. Well, I think you know the shortest I mean? playing time of this is is one and a half hours, isn't it? Yeah, which would be fine, but if, if you it could actually but if it, it leans to two and a half all the time, then I just right. know it's not going to get to the table enough. Well, I thought this one might be interesting to you because some of the comments on it were talking about like how they were amazed this is the first time designer, yeah, and that it seems like it's a game from God, you would know the guy's name. I don't know. I don't know the well, name. Yeah. Yeah, they referenced Lacerda. Which yeah, he was saying it felt like a more but like he's kind of hit and miss for me with this one. Right. So you're saying it was more like a Lacerda game, though, as far as like the complexity and everything. Yeah. It seems exciting. I, I like the fact that it's not just here's another civilization game. Not that that's wrong. I like civilization games, but you're not like, oh, I learned how to do glasswork or, oh, I this learned how like to. This seems like a unique I twist. Learned, right. I, know, I learned how to farm. You're like, oh, I'm Barnum. I'm, you know, PT yeah. Barnum. And here's my legacy opening up this huge right. Ringling Brothers. And then, like, and then my descendants are going to have to take over it. Yeah. And then, like, and then their grandkids are going to have to take over it. And, like, that's your different eras are going to be, like, your descendants and, and maintaining your huge legacy, which, let's be honest, I think that's kind of something that's kind of like hardwired into most, most men is, like, creating that legacy and building something that can be, like, remembered years on. I mean, think about people like Genghis Khan and stuff. Like, talk about a guy who's remembered. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 do, I, I do like that twist that it's more about – like making your mark on the world than it is about simulating like the rise and fall of like a civilization. Yeah, it gives it right. a to me twist. that's a like I didn't even think of this as like a civilization game until she said it just now. Yeah, it was oh the really? first thing we said okay. to each other because yeah. we were talking about this morning. And I was like, this is a Civ game. Like it's just. But you're right. It, it is for all intents and purposes. But I like that it doesn't instantly read that way. It feels like a an actual unique take on right. like the Civ genre. I think it's unique enough that. You, if you like civilization games, you'll probably like the overall idea of this and having like the kind of like the different right. eras and whatnot. But it really is focusing instead of like on a civilization, focusing on a family and then building up that family's yeah. legacy. It's like you're playing Dallas, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Dallas, the board <laughs> game. All right. That office episode where they play <laughs> Dallas, the board game, is and that's great. your '70s <laughs> reference for the stream <laughs> this week. Oh my God! Yeah, and so next week we'll be talking all about Joffrey, Love Boat. Joffrey's <laughs> talking about something very interesting, where he's saying that there's two different sides of it too. So like, PT, yeah, like, that's a cool. So angle for like too. the Ringmaster guy, I don't know if it's PT Barnum or not, but it's like there's the regular side where he's like, oh, I'm a showman, and he's been yeah. promoting people and promotes people, and then there's the underhanded side, which right. if oh they're right. using if they're using historical people, that's, that's right. We cool. almost always find something bad about historical people later on so you're like oh here's the good side that everybody hears about and then right. oh here's the underhandness that they did in order to get that fame initially or something no i think that's it and it also it's it's a cool wrinkle but it also adds replayability right because right. you could be like well i'm gonna be play the same guy the barnum-esque yeah. character but i'm gonna play him as like an a-hole this time instead right. of like this upstanding <laughs> which citizen, is which is know? why rpgs like and video games are really great where you play yeah. through the first time you're like yeah. oh i'm gonna save the solar system the second time you're like yeah die yeah <laughs> where's my <laughs> coins <laughs> Pay me or you die. But here's the thing that's like kind of <laughs> fun and interesting about it is those are the people who are remembered in history oftentimes is like the ruthless. Yeah. The people who are willing to kind of hit below the belt. And I like that they're kind of touching on that theme. You think of like Edison and uh, Tesla and all the war, oh you know, yeah. that kind of conflict yeah. and stuff. I mean, I think that's kind of an interesting, almost sort of historical, sociological comment that the game it's is making It's as almost well. like people have never been good. We've always been. So are you saying this is <laughs> how to be an a-hole the game? Well, I mean, <laughs> well, there's both sides. Because it sounds like that. you can play. So it looks like you get to play as either your best virtues as that person yeah. or as their worst. Which is kind of like, think of like a Lords of Waterdeep or something, right? Like I'll play really corrupt this time or I'll play really straight. Right. You know, and we'll see kind of how it all pans out. And that's a good example because when you add that corruption expansion to Lords of Waterdeep, it completely changed the Absolutely. aspect where you're like, yeah, I'm making more resources, but I'm doing bad things. I'm be no being known as a bad guy so people don't want to work for me as much and then yeah. I lose points at the end of the game because of my corruption so that's a really good push and pull mechanic and I think this will do the same thing <laughs> yeah the Derek versus Derek rivalry is for the it's not ages. really a rivalry <laughs> he's, he's a very small man he's very small <laughs> and uh, he's younger than me. Definitely not as good looking. I don't know why oh there's a rivalry. Oh, gosh. Not nearly. Uh, never mind. Oh, uh, 
I was going to well, say, not my nearly wife is taller. successful. Oh. 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 Don't have to bring the God wives and tall. Speaking I'm of married, hitting below the belt. Woman. I like Lizzie. Jeez. I didn't say anything bad <laughs> about it. She's like, let me out of this. I I'm just saying I married a taller woman. No big deal. No big deal. Yeah. Th- it looks like there's a lot of thought put behind all this and all the stories of all the people and how they tr- transcended through time with everything. I'm super excited to see the gameplay of this. <coughs> For me, though, this wasn't a straight hit home, and I don't know why. I'm not for sure why. Do you think it's like the time involved in it? It might may be. It seems like a really, really long game. It's sixty nine dollars and I just don't know if I'm up for like having this like super back and forth, like good, bad. I don't know. Well, I don't like I said, you can play either side of it. And yeah, my wife could beat up your wife. <laughs> yeah, I said it. I'm not I'm not ashamed. She could beat you up, so you know. Probably Sans to reason. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, so I and you know what is it? Okay, so I'd love to see this one come out with an app-based game and too. And then I can and see too because that takes care of all like the bookkeeping the stuff that can kind of yeah. be annoying. Hundred percent it. I think this just you have to look at your game group and decide what you're going to play. Like, are you going to come over and play Colonist, or are you going to come over and play <laughs> Raccoon Tycoon? And it, different groups, different things. Like if you don't have a big heavy euro, this could be a good one for oh you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this would be a really interesting heavy euro to play. But I want to try it. For it sure. doesn't bring the same excitement level to me that I would want to play in a game. So it was a miss for me, but it doesn't mean that it's not a good game. Like it looks fantastic, and yeah. I'm excited to see how it all works out and runs through and in person and everything with and this one. Dream. mentioned in the chat that they have the same reaction that I do when you see Rado really gush about a game because he, like Tom and so many of these other people who do this full time, they just play more games than the rest of us. Yeah. Right. So Plus when they're really excited about something, it, you can't you help take but notice. take another look. Is yeah. this the one that made the top five in Stonemeier Games Day or the one where know. he? I know. believe so. Oh, I, I think thought you're this right. was I the believe one that so. got that. Which the one of the other ones we looked at that we ended up backing was one of the ones that got in the top five, and right. it was like really good. It just makes me oh wonder yeah, why Stonemeyer didn't like try to pick this one up. Like someone talked about this being a contender for like best game of the year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just seems no, like this has there's uh, something happened in here that people are really excited a about. A ton of great stuff going for it, and with all of the kickstarters I have this week, this was just my I guess least favorite. But it doesn't mean it's bad because I obviously picked it to be on the show for so a reason. I think <laughs> yeah. I think one of the reasons why it might be a miss for some people because like I wouldn't be upset with this one. I just don't know realistically when I'd play it. That's yeah, is concern. one, it's a euro that's c- like heavier, and crunchier, yeah. right? So that's gonna turn some people off. Two, there's nothing about the art or the layout of the Kickstarter campaign itself that is like exciting. Like I didn't see the, the guy with the top hat and I went mundane, yeah. right. I didn't go look at the guy with the top hat and immediately know what the game was about. I didn't build up hype. You know, I wasn't like, I just didn't know anything about it. I had to really dig into it to kind of find out more about it. And we're visual people, and especially when you're going through tons and tons of Kickstarters every yeah. week, it, something about it has to just pop out. Where something like Honey Buzz is easy to pop out, and you can look at it and go, here's all the things I saw on it. I liked it. And you watch a little five-minute video, and you feel like you know a lot about the game. But this is one that you're like, man, there's going to be so much in this game. It's going to be a sit down, read the rules. It's going to be an all-night thing. This is your Thanksgiving dinner. You know, it's not Aww, your mashed potatoes. Yeah. This is your turkey. This is what you're going to probably play. It's going to be the big chunk of your night. Thanksgiving games to play. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. I just got excited for Thanksgiving <laughs> all of a sudden. <laughs> but, you know, part of me almost is drawn to what you're talking about is the idea that this that they're not trying to sell this with with, with flash Fanciness. and sizzle. Yeah. Like, they're just like, dude, we sent this out to the most experienced reviewers they are. They love it. It's, it's just mechanically yeah. super strong. And ultimately, I'm a mechanical gamer over, like, an aesthetic gamer. You know right. what I mean? Which, I mean, so I, I tend I, to lean that way, too. All right. But yeah. Greg, would you back that? I think I'm uh, past just because I'm worried it would be, like you said, something I wouldn't get to enough. But I really want to try it, and I hope it, like, wins me over, and I love it. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Glory Hog, would you back that? The only reason why I would say no is because I can't see you and I just sitting down and playing it, where, like, some of these other games we talked about this week is ones that we would immediately sit down and play once we got it, where this is one that would be like, all right, when do I have, like, you know, two or three days off of work in a row <laughs> to kind of, like, <laughs> learn it, play it, yeah. and play it again? Because it's definitely one of those ones that if once you play, I feel like you would almost want to play it again, like, the next oh, night. Oh, yeah. It's cemented in. Right, yeah. Yeah. to really get, like, more depth into it. And it's one of those ones that this – it's kind of bordering on, like, that lifestyle-style game where you're, like, this is the type of game that you're, you're going to have to play, like, 20, 30, 40 times to really unlock it all. Can I ask a question? Yes. Who's Daniel yelling at? <laughs> <laughs> Doug, I will fight you to death for theme versus mechanics. I like I theme. Okay. I was saying aesthetics versus mechanics. Yeah, I don't yeah. know who Doug is. I don't know who Doug is either. And I know he's not talking to me because everyone knows I love theme. 
All right, so. I like pretty things. I'm going to pass on this one this week just because we have so many other ones that I want to back, but it I'm excited to play it in person. It's final version, final copy. Could pick it up in <laughs> the future just because it looks amazing. It, it looks fantastic. I don't know. I just have some reserves about it. I so. do love the name Doug. <laughs> I, I could see going by Doug. I almost like Doug better than Greg. I see Do this you? game as being a game, though, that, like, yeah, if you could get a play under your belt or if you could even find it for, like, a cool deal or something or you just see it in the game store, you could potentially pick it up to who fill in that niche. Not to, like, rewind, but who was the company on that one? I can't remember. It's new. That was Brooks Fun Games. It's like yeah. a first-time yeah. thing, too. It was new. That's it the other, like, slight hesitation It for was me. just... They did. They did such a well, such a great job getting it out. I mean, yeah. everything looked amazing on it. It didn't look like it was their first right. rodeo with everything. It doesn't like, sound like it plays that way either. Yeah. No, I yeah. was I was super excited I just about that one. wonder if it's going to be something where it's going to be available later, likely for retail, or if this is kind of like your opportunity and you take it or where or you get right. like the late yeah, pledges take it or and leave that's it. it. I do have to put one caveat too, though, that we are kind of in a special group as far as like a lot of times it's hard for us to get back to games again and again and again. So sometimes the shorter games look more appealing because you feel like <laughs> I could play this a couple <laughs> times in a night versus like I'm going to play this once every six months and yeah. I, I have always have to relearn it every time. I have games already in right. my collection you that do. I play you once a, a year. You know, if that, and like every time I play it, I have to go, okay, how's this work again? And, you know, like I own Lisboa. I don't play Lisboa that Right. Well. You yeah, know what I mean? you, and you if bring I it out once a year. Yeah, you know? if I were to try to play it today, I'd You'd be have like, to relearn it. it'd be like starting from scratch, you know? Every time. And yeah. I have less and less sort of whatever the right word is, tolerance. But or if you're a person that has like that. a weekly game night and yeah. you know you and your friends are going to play it two or three times right. in a month, like, why not? Yeah. All right. Thank you for everybody that joined us. And I did want to mention two really awesome dice Kickstarters that I actually, I should have pulled up the screens and everything for oh them. Weird. She's talking about dice. I know. I'm sorry. Okay. So you one of dice? them, I do. Just a little bit. Just a little <laughs> bit. But these ones are two super fantastic ones. You can head on over to my Kickstarter page and everything I back to take a look at them. It's Dispel Dice. And I can't even remember the other one. But the Dispel Dice look really cool. And then there's they another look like one that prismatic has prismatic um, dice. Has like a liquid underneath them. So like it's like almost like a gel underneath them. So like, like a you little roll the lava dice, lamp like and everything. Yes. Kind of, yeah. yes. <laughs> That's exactly I have to it. Say that they are amazing. sweet. And the Dispel yes. Dice are amazing looking too. The Dispel Dice are the ones that like she was giving me like every two hours, like an update. She's like, it's at one million. That it's Dispel at two million. Dice, guys. Oh, wow. Okay. So Dispel Dice launched yesterday. And their end of day, or last time I looked at it, was. 1.3 million. Okay. Why for dice. Why are people putting all this for work dice. into making <laughs> games? <laughs> you just make some cool looking dice, man. That's where the money's at, apparently. Sometimes. They look prismatic. Holy crap. They're fantastic looking. And then the other ones, yeah, they do have a liquid core. And it's when like you roll gushers. them. For dice. It spins in there, inside. and it's like a <laughs> little whirlwind of stuff. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Well like, check that out. That's yeah. cool. The dude that <laughs> is going to be making his artisan dice yeah, forever. Because the guy yes. who, the person who did this yes. Kickstarter, like, he signed up for, like, a 35-day Kickstarter, and it's oh already yeah. hit, like, 1.3 million. They He's going to be making dice for the rest of his life. They already <laughs> moved Around it out. Around the clock. Yeah. They're like, all right, we've already taken so many orders for this year. Our next stage is, like, next year. So 2021 yeah. uh, is when people are going to start receiving that next wave of dice. Which because at least he's honest it's about insane. that, saying, like, hey, we're full that up. That reminds me of, like, the big statue in that, come on. What's the yeah. name where it was like of the liquid each dice? Each got it, like, three months later than yeah. the last. It's like, you better sign up quick or you're going to be getting it in, like, 2030. Gosh, Ben, you mean you don't follow me on Kickstarter and know exactly what I'm backing? <laughs> Watch out, Ben. <laughs> he probably does. It doesn't mean he's the wrath. I mean, technically, Ben's probably supposed to be working right now. Ooh, oh, oh, okay. As are on probably his, most of these people. He might be on his like, lunch break. Who, we're thankful. The other one is called out. Goat Dice, changing the way we roll. Greatest of and all time dice. Look them up. They're fantastic. That sounds like, amazing. Yeah, they look amazing. They are really, really good. Other than that, I think I that's was excited about, about the goat it. dice, and usually I'm like a dice. Yeah, more yeah, dice. Yeah, these dice were crazy. We yeah, more dice. 40 sh sets. They're, oh. all, they're <laughs> all artisan dice. Daniel, you need long pack to start making prismatic dice and core crazy dice. That's what I'm going to call them, core crazy, core crazy dice. dice. Yeah, core I call crazy them dice. Swal <laughs> CC dice. They're called swalice. They're swirly dice. Swalice. I like the lava lamp dice. Lava lamp dice. Lava that would be good. Lava dice. You have, like, the little bubbles going in. Yeah. You, like, move it. <laughs> that would Whoa. be awesome. This is trippy, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> so cool. Well, thank you for everybody that went ahead Bye, and <laughs> joined us today. Super awesome. Um, nice to meet you all. I'm Doug. Yeah, we are going to be back <laughs> next week with more Kickstarters and app-based games here soon. I just got in some stuff so I can play Ra Raiders of the North Sea. Yeah, Raiders of the North Sea on Switch. So I'm putting that together. I'm really excited about it. So we're going to be able to play app-based games on different platforms and kind of showing you like a full profile of everything. I'm super excited about it, guys. Other than that, we will see you guys all next week. Thank you everybody who joined us today we had so much fun talking with you guys and in the comments we will see you guys all later back Bye. some games <laughs>